great. Thanks. Hi, everyone. So my name is Bart. I'm a postdoc at the um, Kohler Lab at the Ethelwood Biocenter. And today I'm going to tell you about some of the research lines that we have in the lab. I'm trying to understand how plants produce seeds and basically why you should care. So when you think about plants, you probably don't think of them as sexual beings, but they actually are. And uh, they're not that very, very different from animals. And in the same way that uh, in animals, sperm has to find its way through the maternal tissue, through the uterus, through the fallopian tubes, to find a suitable object to fertilize. The plants are not so different in that when the pollen grain reaches the, the female tissues, it has to form a tube. It has to burrow through the female tissue until it finds an ovule. And things continue not to be that different if you look at how uh, animal sperm behave and try and swap into each other's sperm in find, finding an egg. Oh, they didn't crash. And uh, when you look at the plant's pollen tube, things are also quite similar in that the pollen tube basically tries the best it can in order to follow to find an object. In either case, if this fertilization is, um, is successful, uh, whenever get the guy gets there, uh, embryo will be formed, right? But actually in flowering plants, uh, the products of fertilization, um, it's not only an embryo, because after the ovule is fertilized by the pollen tube, it forms an embryo, yes, that will form the mature the plant in the next generation. But the embryo is surrounded by another tissue, the endosperm, which is uh, a nutritive tissue that works similarly to the male and placenta, so to convey nutrients from the mother to the growing embryo. And while in some plants, like this one that I showed you here, when the embryo is at its full growth, the endosperm has been uh, consumed, in other plant species, the endosperm is actually um, it doesn't, it's not consumed by the embryo and it stays there in the mature seed. And this is very common in many crops that we use. So, even if you don't know about it, endosperm is a very primary source of uh, nutrition and it's present in our very daily life as the grain itself or as a subproduct of grain. Also, very importantly, uh, endosperm from barley, from wheat, is where beer comes from. So, I think you all agree with me that understanding how endosperm develops um, is of prime importance for our, um, uh, for our species. So, what is it that we do in the lab? Basically, endosperm comes from a single cell in the maternal ovule. And what we're interested in understanding is how is it that this one cell, after fertilization, divides and divides again and again and again, and it forms this tissue that is so important for us and for animals. And, uh, um, yeah, and for the um, physical well-being. So, if you want to know more about it, I guess you'll have to vote for me because I'll probably know about it at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. You get it, or? You get it. No one gets it right. Yeah. Ah, it was my fifth time. <laughs> okay. Let's start to get on with the, the formal side of this, this competition. Uh, if we start with uh, the uh, comments from the, from the jury, please. Okay. Uh, thank you for this presentation. Um, I think uh, you have fairly clear slides and uh, kind of easy to follow for me as a researcher. But maybe they are a little bit uh, too complicated for us habit to mm. yeah. But I think it's, it's good you compare to things in everyday life. Uh, people can relate to it. That was good. Uh, so, so, and it made it interesting so people saw what we can use it for. Uh, so another thing that you might think of is maybe to talk a little bit slower. I think that okay. would uh, improve for the next time. Mm. Thanks. I agree with Anna. Uh, we talk a, a bit too fast mm -hmm. uh, for the way I work in something like me. It's, uh, it's not a scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, but I like the slides. Good images. And, uh, I'm here as a, a performer and I'm going to kind of judge the performance. Uh, and I'm an average people, uh, so uh, I didn't understand uh, how the thing is said, but I think also that you had uh, a kind of sad. So it made me talk some slower, but uh, I said, oh, that's good. I, I like beer too. I don't know. So, so good, good energy, yeah, but uh, maybe a little bit too fast. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, now we're going to mix with this. 
and uh, the jury, the Coastal people, and the, the gambling, the phone carriers are supposed to vote at the same time. The, uh, the voting system is set up in such a way that you can give between one and five points. And five is not all, only more, it's also better. So five is the best score one can get, okay? okay. So between one and five. Uh, Good, but the jury, of course, seems slightly more, a bit better than the rest of us <laughs> are able to give up to 10 points. Okay, so everybody is clear on, on the voting system. So these votes. Sora, have you collected all the post-its? Magnus. And uh, Marni, you've got the scores are, are... You collected all the scores, Marni? Very good. Okay. Thank you, then. Thank you. Thank you.